the rhema word of God coming down to, to rest upon each and every one of your hearts this morning. We believe that this morning. And God doesn't make mistakes. So everybody who, who's here is supposed to be here this morning. He just doesn't make mistakes. We do, but he doesn't. So I want to talk to you about some stuff today. I want to talk to you about renewing your lives. I want to talk to you about being a true person. I want to talk to you about suffering. Can we talk about suffering this morning? I don't know if we understand what it is to suffer and what it means to suffer. So we want to let you know this morning what it means to suffer. First, uh, you know, for me, I always have to give you the definition because if I just tell you to go out and suffer, you don't understand what I'm talking about. And some of us feel that we've suffered in our lives, but if you don't know the definition of suffering, then how do you know if you've ever suffered? The definition of suffer means to tolerate. Have you tolerated some people? We're not talking about the person next to you in your cubicle that you say, uh, I don't know about that person. That person's making me suffer. We don't talk about your boss. We're not talking about that. But it also means to endure. That's what suffer means, to endure. It also means to endure or accept injury or pain or death. So with all those you endure, that's what it means to suffer. And it also gives a definition in suffering to endure evil. If you look it up in your dictionary, you'll see that it says to endure evil. Now, to be in this world, I know you've endured evil before. But we want to get away from this superficial look at who Jesus is. Because a lot of us say we know him and we want him, but do we really accept him? Because as soon as something happens in our lives, we're the first to, to deny him and say, look, I just want to get this problem fixed. I'm, not, uh, you know, I'm going through some issues. I just want to get this fixed and instead of accepting the foundation of our lives. So we want to talk about this this morning. And the best way for me to talk about it is to tell you some issues that I've dealt with before. Can I be true with you today? Is that okay? All of you know I haven't been a pastor all of my lives, uh, life, and I, I've been through some issues in my life. But I want to tell you about a story that, that happened to somebody else. First of all, I have to make sure you understand that, that Romans 10, 9 says that if we confess that Jesus is Lord, if we believe in our heart that, that God raised him from the dead, then we shall be saved. Everybody has said that at one time in your life. You, you've accepted Jesus. And so the question that we always have is, did we really accept him? You know, we've been through so much stuff in our lives. Soon as I, I said those words, all hell broke loose in my household. All the, the things I, I, I kept going towards, I, I wanted to run towards even more, but then something was trying to pull me away. So did I really accept him? That's the question we have. And I want to tell you a story about a man who dealt with that, that, that same question. 2 Corinthians, I want you to write this down. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, In Christ that you are a new creation, that the old things have passed away and all things have become new. That's what happens when you give your life. But is it really new? Do you feel it? Because all I know is that when I gave my life to Christ, it got worse before it got better. Am I the only one in here who has gotten worse before it's gotten better? I know that there are a few of you, there's at least two of you in here, that when you gave your life to Christ, it seemed like it got worse. You used to give freely, but then, then something started hindering you from giving. You started saying, man, I've got these financial issues coming in my life. I can't give as much as I used to. Things started happening, and you started being challenged. And it's like, wait a minute, did I really give my life? And then there's been times when you're in your room by yourself and you're saying, man, I don't feel it. I can't feel it. My mind is not set right now. Where is God? 
am I not talking to the right crowd this morning who's been through that? If you've been through that, show with a round of applause, letting God know that you have been one of those people. So I'm not talking just about myself. I'm talking about everybody else in here. And so I had a, a story of a gentleman who came to me. And this gentleman was on his last leg and he was needing help. And he came to me and he said, Pastor, he said, you know, at the time he was just calling me Larry. He said, Larry, I just want to let you know, man, I'm going through some stuff. I, I, I'm almost to the point where I, 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 I want to take my life. I don't even want to live anymore. And I said, if, if you didn't pick up the phone, it was done. I was going to end my life this night. I said, I'm going to give one call. If it goes to his voicemail, I'm going to end my life tonight. And normally, you know, if I'm not paying attention, I don't see that call. But I saw the call. I just happened to be walking by. The phone was on vibrate. And I picked it up. And I just picked it up and said, hey, hello. I didn't know the number or anything. And the person told me this. And I said, well, look, let me, let me, I want to see you right now. They said, right now? Yeah, I want to see you right now. So I went and saw that person. And that person was telling me, he said, man, uh, I don't know. Something strange has been going on in my life. I don't, I, I don't know what's going on. I'm, I'm having some issues. I, I don't know. Uh, something's telling me to take my life. Something's telling me that it's not worth it anymore. Something's telling me, you know, just end it. It'll be easier. You'll find out if this God really exists. And I, uh, the one statement I made, I said, if that something is telling you it, why didn't that something take your life? If that something is so big, why couldn't that something do it? And I said, you know, sir, you read the Bible, right? He said, yeah, I read my Bible all the time. I said, do you read 1 Peter? He said, yeah, I've read it. I've read 1 Peter several times. How many times have you read? I read about five times in my life. I've read it several times. I've read 1 Peter, 2 Peter, all of those. And I said, really? So you've read those? Yes. But he said, I'm not looking for that right now. I'm looking for you to tell me something from God. I, I want to be delivered tonight. And so there are times when you go through issues like that and you're, 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 you know, it forces you to, to react in one way or another. It's like, man, I, I'm supposed to be a pastor. How do I react to something like this? This man wants to take his life. How do I react? What do I do? And so even my heart started to flutter. I started to shake. I was like, whoo, we are tempted. We have to see if God's going to work this time. I know he's going to work. All these times I've been praying for people. All these times I've been, been sacrificing for people. All these times I was crying when nobody else knew that I was crying. God, I'm going to need you to do something supernaturally tonight. And so I'm praying, and I tell this person, I said, you know, first of all, under my breath, I said, Holy Spirit, do what you do. And then I said, uh, he kept telling me, you know, there, there's some issues. I don't know if Jesus exists. You know, I gave my life a long time ago, but I don't know if he exists. There's, there, you know, I know things have changed, but things have gotten worse. I know that. That could be coincidental. But things have happened in my life, and I don't know. I'm going through all this sacrifice. I'm going through all these trials. My finances are acting up. Everything is going wrong in my life. I want you to show me something that tells me he exists. And the person was crying and saying, I, I don't know. I, I, I can't. My relationship ain't right. My family ain't right. I can't see my children. What do I do? You have to tell me something here tonight. Larry, he didn't even respect and want to call me pastor at that moment. He said, you have to tell me something tonight. If you don't tell me something tonight, there'll be no tomorrow. I said, well, I want you to read this scripture. I need you to read this scripture. I said, you, I know you read 1 Peter, but I want you to see this scripture. He said, no, no, no. That scripture can be later. I need some deliverance tonight. I said, no, no, no. I, the deliverance is in that scripture. He said, I don't, I, I, I don't want that. I want some word tonight. I said, okay, then, then I want you to write the scripture down. He wrote the scripture down. And I said, there's, there's no other word but reading the word. I'm not the word. I'm not Jesus. 
And he said, man, this better be good because I've read Peter a thousand times. I said, I know you're suffering. He said, something strange are ha is, is happening in my life. And I don't understand why. I don't understand why God ain't stepped in and helped me. Do I have some people in here who felt that way before? He said, I'm dealing with these issues. I'm tempted to take drugs. I'm tempted to smoke and drink and do all those other things. And he hasn't stepped in yet. I don't feel that he stepped in yet. And it scared me as a man, but as a pastor, I don't fear evil. So I told him, I said, God's going to show you that he loves you tonight. And he said, well, how's he going to do that? I said, all I ask that you do today is listen to me. I'm not God. I couldn't be God. The only reason you have me here is because he put it on your heart and he knew that I was going to give you the right scripture because I read it the night before. And he said, okay, well, okay, and I'm telling you, this person was crying, this person was screaming out, this person was to, to the point where just breaking down. And all I had, the only thing that held me up at that moment was the spirit of God. And so I said, open your Bible to first Peter and he opened his Bible to first Peter and he said okay I'm just gonna write this scripture down I'll, I'll read it some other time if if everything works I said no you're gonna read it right now he said man you don't understand I'm suffering he said my finances are shot my rent is due my car just got repoed I've had that car for years it got repoed I will have five payments left on that car and they're gonna repo it cuz I'm one payment late My family left me. I've got all kind of bad feelings happening in my heart. I pray to God, but I didn't get nothing in return. Anybody ever screamed out and wondered why God hadn't answered you at that very moment? You sit there and say, man, God, where are you? I need something. Turn the lights off. Do something in me right now. Flicker. Do something. Give me an easy feeling. Do something. I need you now, Lord. He said, I, I can't even get my relationship right anymore. I, you know, nothing is working right for me. I lost a family member last week. What use do I have? What use am I? I come to church and I fake it all that time, acting like I know God. But look at me now bawling. Look at me now screaming. Look at me now crying. And asking you to show me what I claim I believe in. So I asked him to open that book up. And God gave me the perfect scripture because I was reading that scripture the night before. That's how God prepares you. You'll read something the night before and he'll have you prepared for the day after. And I had him read that scripture. And I said, I want you to read 1 Peter 4. And he turned in 1 Peter 4 and he was looking at 1 Peter 4 and he said, um, okay, that's great. And I said, verse 12. I said, read it to me. I need you to read it to me. And you know what he did? He started reading it and he said, okay, I'm going to read this, but I don't believe in this. I'm, I've got to read it. He said, dear friends, do not be surprised at the painful trial you are suffering. Do you know he couldn't breathe at that moment because he was reading that word. And he said, this is for me. Dear friends, do not be surprised at the painful trial you are suffering as though something is strange <laughs> was happening to you. He said, man, I just said that. He said, but rejoice that you participate in the sufferings of Christ. So that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. That man broke down. He didn't break down for his lack of belief. He broke down in his faith because he knew that he was suffering for Jesus. And that changed his life from saying, man, I'm suffering, I'm suffering more, and I don't feel like I know God, to saying, I'm suffering more because of God. So his whole demeanor changed. 
His whole life changed at that very moment. And he revealed to me that I was the only one who was put on his mind. You know what that tells you? That tells you that sometimes you will experience stuff like that. And when you experience stuff like that, you've got to be prepared. Think about it if you weren't prepared. If I didn't read the night before and I would have got in front of that man, what would I have said? Man, I don't know what I can do. I'm, I mean, God loves you, Jesus. I gave him John 3, 16. That's not going to help him. He needs something individually specialized just for him. So sometimes your reading ain't about you. It's about the next person you're going to meet. And so this man's life got changed, not because of me, but because of God through me. What does that tell you? You have to read. You have to pray. The people on the ground this morning, you may have been delivered from something, but you're delivering other people from things they're going through. And so I say that because some of you came here feeling that way, feeling exactly how that man felt, feeling, you know, I know you've been there before where you just didn't have any more left in your tank. You've been overwhelmed by everything. You feel that God doesn't, doesn't uh, pay attention to you. He's not listening to you. But I'm here to tell you something different today. You think that God is punishing you, that you don't know Jesus. How many people have had that experience before, saying, I don't know about them. I've seen all them other people falling down, but I ain't even feeling it right now. You think that God is punishing you. You think that God doesn't love you. How many people have thought that before, saying, man, God doesn't love me. He's allowing me to go through all of this. I can't pay a bill. I'm robbing Peter to pay Paul. I don't have the right money. My car keeps breaking down. I'm trying to fix it, but it keeps breaking down. And just when I spend all my money on it, something else breaks. How many people have experienced that before? You're thinking God doesn't hear you. You've been praying. You've been asking him to deliver you from things and sit there and you pray for hours or you pray for minutes or you cry in your car, but you've done all of that and you still feel he doesn't hear you because nothing has changed. Am I talking to the right crowd? If I'm talking to the right crowd, say amen. Amen. So I'm here to tell you this morning that you're not getting it. We've got to shift our thinking this morning because God is reaching every one of us. I'm here to tell you that he's not punishing you. I'm here to tell you that you do know Jesus. I'm here to tell you that God does love you. He does hear you. Every word you speak, he takes it in like a, like a, like nectar. And he hears your pain. He feels your sorrow. I brought you here today to tell you that the only reason you're suffering is because Christ suffered. And you're doing exactly what he wanted you to do. You cannot let the devil tell you anymore that you're not worthy. Every one of you in here are worthy. You know how you know you're worthy? Because you suffer. The whole purpose of this scripture is to let you know that don't be surprised at the pains and the trials you are suffering as though something strange was wrong with you. Now, I know many times I've sat there and said, man, I don't know if I can do this, God. You've put people under my tutelage and you're giving me the word of God. I don't know if I can do this every week, God. But he says, I want you to suffer. I want you to go through because you're going to live just like my son lived. And so now when I take on suffering, I take it on with the love of God, understanding that if my mind, now I know some of you have experienced this before, where your mind is off, your thinking is off. You don't don't even want to do that God thing. I know you've woken up before and said, man, I don't even want to pray this morning. I don't even feel like getting up. My kid's getting on my last nerve. I don't want to do nothing today. But I'm here to tell you that that is in your suffering. The suffering seems like a detachment from God, but it's actually an attachment to God. You sit there and say, man, I don't know. I I don't know. God may be condemning me for the bad things I've done. I may have an inappropriate relationship. I may have talked to somebody wrong. I may have cursed. I may still be drinking. I may have that sin still on me. But I'm here to tell you that the suffering is because of God. 
God, why'd you take this job away from me? I had, I was making all this money, and then you take me down to nothing. I can't even pay my bills. I can't even, I don't even have enough to pay tithes. I don't have enough to offer anything. All I have is nothing. Why'd you take all this away from me? Things were going so well. And God says, it's in the suffering that you know me. You told me that you wanted to know me more. We've asked God many times, show me you, Jesus. I want to know more. Have, help me to live like you, Christ. I want to experience you, Lord. I want to see your love. You see his love by his suffering. You don't see his love by having all the money in the bank, by having all the cars, by having all the women, by having all the men, by having all these things. You see his love through his suffering. So we say this. But then we ask God for things, and then when he gives it to us in the true, natural, raw state, we say, God, I can't take it anymore. And some of you even make the, 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 the conscious mistake of saying, God, I want to suffer like you. Things are going too well. Help me to experience your suffering. And you think it's going to be this superficial suffering. Suffer means to tolerate, to endure evil, injury pain or death so when you go through all of that then you say man I can't take it anymore I asked God for some suffering but he done made my cup run it's over and with suffering <laughs> so you got to understand God doesn't punish you he's not punishing you he punished Jesus Jesus died for all of that Jesus allows you to suffer to experience more of him. You want more love, you get more suffering. Show your love when one of your chi children are sick. Show your love when you're dealing with an illness that won't go away. Show your love when you're dealing with a disease or you're dealing with a mental disease. Show your love when one of your children's dealing with a disease, when one of your children's on their deathbed. Show your love when one of your children passes. You want more of Christ, you get more suffering. How are you going to act if that happened to you? You said you want his love, you get it. People say, man, my, my business not working right. I've got all these issues going on. I don't have any money in my bank accounts. Great. That's more of God. I would rather you come to me when everything is going well and question whether you know Jesus, then to come to me when everything's breaking loose and say you can't feel him. Because when everything's going well, when you have all the money you want, when everything's working right with your children, when everything's going right in your household, that's when you need to question. Because the last Bible I read says that to experience Christ is to experience his suffering. To have an intimate relationship with Jesus, you must have an intimate relationship in his suffering. It's real simple. You've got to experience the, the mindset of thinking, man, I don't know. I've been praying all these days and now I just don't feel like praying anymore. Or I've been uh, reaching out to God and he showed me in the beginning, but now he's just not showing up. He's just as close as he was when you first experienced it. But his love is not based on your feelings. It's based on your faith. When you feel like not going to church, that's the time you get up and go because now you're suffering. Say, God, I ain't feeling it today. I'm arguing with my wife. I'm fighting with my friends. I, I, I'm mad at the pastor. That's why I'm going to get up because I want to experience the suffering. So the next question If you look into different countries, do you know how the nonprofit organizations help the starving countries? Do you know how they first start doing that? It happens because somebody went there and experienced the suffering. If you've seen it on TV, it's one thing. You see it on TV and you say, oh, I don't know, I might send something. I might. Y'all know, y'all see it on TV, y'all change channels because you don't want to see the suffering. But if you were there and you experienced it, it's a whole new ball game. 
Now you're feeling it. You're thinking about that kid you seen who was starving. You're thinking about that kid who was crying. You're thinking about that kid who, who died in front of you. And that makes you pay more attention to that individual issue rather than seeing it on TV. I'm telling you today that Jesus is telling us in our suffering is when we're going to appreciate what he is more. And I want you to get this today because I don't want the devil to tell you anymore that you ain't worthy. I don't want him to tell you that you ain't getting it. I don't want him to tell you that you shouldn't come to church anymore. I'm telling you today that in your suffering, you know Jesus Christ. And I know I got two of you in here who are least excited about Jesus. If you're excited, give him a round of applause in the name of Jesus. I want you to write this. Write this down. Blessings come from God. Suffering comes because of God. See, what I'm doing is I'm unarming the enemy. Some of you came in here feeling like, man, I'm waiting to get it from God. So he has to tell me something. But I'm unarming, I'm unarming him today. He no longer has power to come in your household anymore. Because his whole power is to make you think that your suffering is unworthy. God's whole power is to tell you that your suffering is because you're worthy. Do you understand that? Those mental thoughts that you have, I know that I, I've had them before. Where I think, man, I don't know. I don't feel like it anymore. I don't know if I'm doing enough for God. God's saying enough was done. All you're doing is blessing the kingdom. 2 Corinthians 12.10 says this. This is Paul when he was given a thorn in his flesh. He was given the thorn in his flesh, which was called a messenger from Satan. It was a messenger of Satan. It was an evil spirit. He was given that thorn in his flesh because of the revelation that he received from God. You get that? Because he received revelation from God, he received a messenger from Satan. And that messenger was tormenting him day and night. You know, you've dealt with that messenger before that said you're not worthy. You've dealt with that messenger before that said you fell asleep while you were praying. You ain't worthy. God ain't hearing you. You, you shouldn't even pray because you're falling asleep all the time. Am I not the only one who's experienced that before? Why even waste your time reading the Bible? Every time you read it, you can't get a page through without falling asleep. What y'all laughing at? Some of y'all did that last night, didn't you? <laughs> so Paul was given a thorn because of the revelation that he got from God. And when asked, he asked Jesus, he said, please take it away from me. He asked three times. Take it away from me. I am going through some stuff right now. I just want to praise you. Take it away from me. Take it away from me. How many people have said, take it away from me, God? I'm going through some issues in my life. Take it away from me, God. Restore my finances, God. Restore my household, God. Don't let my child die, God. Don't let my child go through these issues, God. Bring him back into my household. Make him respect me, God. Hey, please help me. Take it away. How many people have said, take it away? If you said, take it away, say it real loud. So... All of us have said the same thing. And if you're reading the same Bible, then Paul was told by Jesus, yeah, that's all great, but my grace is sufficient. You will deal with every issue you have because I love you. He's saying because he loves you, because he loves you, you will go through trials. Because he loves you, sometimes you'll cry out, but you won't get a response. Because he loves you, you will have some issues with your children. Because he loves you, you will live in lack sometimes. Because he loves you, you will slip in curse. Because he loves you, you will slip back into sin. Because he loves you, you will have those enemies attacking you on every angle. Because he loves you. Because he loves you. That's why he's telling you. He said, my grace is sufficient. I know you will go through some issues in your life, but when you go through them, praise me. When you're going through some issues in your life, praise me. When you're giving glory because the enemy is attacking you, praise me. He's saying, don't do it anymore. Don't allow him to take the glory away from you. You got it. 
You got it. You are being freed up today to praise God. Your job can't tell you how to praise God. Your family can't tell you how to praise God. Your suffering can't tell you how to praise God. When you go through something in your life, this is what you say. You say, God's grace is sufficient. I am willing to go through whatever it takes for you, Lord. That's what it's about, family. That's what it's about. He told Paul, one of his best men, he said, no, no, no. I will not take away that cup of suffering that you have in your life. It's not going anywhere. You may be dealing with an issue where you cannot restore it. You may be dealing with an addiction that's been attacking you and coming back and coming back. And God says, I see it. I hear you. I hear you crying. I hear you screaming out. I hear your temptation. But all I got to say is my grace is sufficient. You want to know me more? Know my love. My love will allow you to go through it. I can't get my child to stop doing the things she's doing. Uh, she keeps running away. She keeps bad-mouthing me. She keeps cursing me out. I pray to you all the time, God, but you ain't restored me yet. What is going on? He said, my grace is sufficient. Deal with it. Know that in your suffering, I love you. It goes further to say in that same 2 Corinthians 12, 10, that Jesus said that his power is made perfect in your weakness. It's not made perfect when your bills are paid. It's not made perfect when your children act right the first time. It's not made perfect when, when you pray and you're delivered immediately. It's not made perfect when that happens. It's made perfect when you have some doubt in your mind. It's made perfect when you're thinking about going to church. It's made perfect when you're thinking about praying. It's made perfect when the TV gets in your way. It's made perfect when your children going through some issues. It's made perfect when you lose your job. It's made perfect when you lose your car. It's made perfect in your weakness. And you got to be willing to say, God, your grace is sufficient. I know I'm going through some issues, but it's, see, you got to be willing to tell the tormentor who your God is. No longer tell God how big your problem is. Tell the tormentor who your God is. When he tries to attack you, you need to get up and say, my God is sufficient enough. He's given me all that I need to survive. When you feel you're not worthy anymore, you feel God is not talking to you. You need to stand up and say, this is the moment when I give God praise. This is the moment when I give him praise. Not when everything's going great. That's when you get up and say, God, I love you. Thank you. God, I see, think about it. When your mind is out there and you can't think right, you got all kind of chaos going in your life, to give God praise is more than when everything is going right. God, I don't understand it. I'm, I'm, I feel like taking my life, but I give glory to God because I'm not going to do it. That's what I'm talking about. That's what God is asking from us. So some of us have experienced mental torment, and it seems unbearable. How many people have experienced that before? It seems unbearable. You're not the only one. Look at around. Look at all them hands that are up. Everybody has experienced it before. Even men have their hands up. You're not alone. We're one family. We have all experienced it. Some of y'all experienced it and said, I don't know if I know God. How many people? Raise your hand if you've had that feeling before and said, I don't know if I know God. I don't know. I want to show you something here. When you experience that mental torment that seems unbearable, seems like you're detached from God, it's just a tormentor. It's how he works. But you have to understand that the tormentor was allowed to torment Paul. He had to get authority to do it. So when you feel that way and you know that you've confessed with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, his only power is your lack of knowledge. So what you need to do is praise God. When you feel like you're not feeling it, that's when you praise God. You say, God, I don't understand why I'm doing this, but I'm praising you. I feel like jumping off a building, but I'm praising you. I feel like taking my life, but I'm praising you. I feel like going back into that addiction, but I'm praising you. Lord, I don't know why I'm doing it, but I'm jumping up, and I have no reason why. Marching around 
the walls of Jericho, marching around it, tore it down. You, you want crazy, radical praise? Do it when God, when you feel he doesn't deserve it. Because he knows your heart. And he's sitting there saying, that child of mine was in the worst torment like he did when he said to Job. He said, you tested my, 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 my servant Job, and Job still never cursed me. I took everything away from him. I let you kill some of his family members, and he still never cursed me. And so he's going to look at you, he's going to say, I took, I took everything I could away from my servant Sylvia. I took everything I could from my servant Kathy. I took everything I could from my servant Job. All these Job's in the house. Raise your hand like you really mean it. That was old school right there. My Lord. You heard that? <laughs> Woo, we got family in the house. <laughs> Look, you have to know what a yoke is. A yoke, the definition of a yoke, I want you to write this down because you got to study what God is saying to us. It is a crossbar with two U-shaped pieces that encircles the neck of a pair of animals working together. Did you get that? A yoke is for a pair of animals. A, a pair of, two animals. A pair of animals. And Jesus said in Matthew eleven twenty nine, 29, Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest in your soul. He's saying, look, I've got this yoke on my neck. I want you to put it around your neck, and we're going to walk together. Do you get that? It's for both. Jesus said, look, I'm going to be suffering with you. When you ain't feeling it, I'm walking with you. You sitting down on your side, you screaming, I'm right beside you. You crying out, I'm right beside you. You screaming, you thinking it ain't working, I'm holding you up. You dragging, you dragging on your feet, can't get it right, I'm with you. Sometimes you, you lift up, I'm with you. You think you can't figure out why you're being held up, it's because I'm holding you up. You can't figure out why you ain't pulled the trigger, it's because I got my finger in between it. You can't figure out why you didn't take enough pills, it's because I stopped you from taking more. This is our God. He said his yoke is upon us. His yoke, not your yoke, his yoke, meaning he has it on his neck, and you have it on your neck. When you cry, he cries. When you're in a dungeon, he's with you. When you're on a mountain, he's with you. When you're blessed, he's with you. When you feel that you're cursed, he's with you. So I want you to know that, in other words, you will have trials. You will have trials. Do you understand that? You will have trials. I'm telling everybody, there will be trials in your life because of Jesus. You will suffer because of Jesus. No longer can the tormentor tell you you're not worthy anymore. I'm touching the hearts of the true believers, the people who have experienced what I've experienced. And so he says his grace is sufficient. And I know some of you have been picked on before, feel you're not worthy or whatever, but his grace is sufficient. That's all you need. He did it to Paul. He didn't even let one of his top men of God get away from it. So if he didn't let him get away from it, why do you think he's going to let you get away from it? To let you get away with it and everything work right is to say you're a child of the devil. Through your suffering, you experience Christ. Some of you have been lied to before. And you say, man, if this person would stop lying to me, it's probably one of your closest friends. You said if they would just stop lying, if they would stop being deceitful, and God is saying, my grace is sufficient. you got to know that. They're going to keep lying until you get it. It ain't about them. It's about you. You've been cheated on before. There's some of you who've had relationships or maybe married today who've been cheated on before. You said, I am sick and tired of it. God, can you please stop that person? I love them. I want to stay with them. Can you please stop them from doing that? Can you deliver them from it? And God says, I know what they're doing, but my grace is sufficient. Some of you in your own intimate time saying, God, I don't pray enough. I don't know why I fall asleep. I don't know why issues are going on in my life. I, can't, I say I want to pray, but then the, the, the game comes on. I say I want to 
to pray, but then my movie comes on. I tell you I want to pray, but then I turn to Women's Network. I know y'all be on that network all the time. But he's saying, he's saying, look, I understand that, but your prayer is not the reason I chose you. I chose you before you were created. I chose you before you were created. The prayer will help you to be delivered from things, but I'm telling you, when you experience that, God is saying, my grace is sufficient. I know your heart. Don't let the enemy tell you who you are. You've got to tell the enemy. You've got to tell the tormentor. He doesn't, what he doesn't want to hear. He loves to hear, man, I don't know what I'm going to do. He loves to hear, man, I just can't get through this. He loves to hear nobody knows what I'm going through. He loves to hear why are they are abusing me. He loves to hear, man, I'm not worthy of this anymore. He wants you to say that. But he hates when you say things like, I'm blessed coming in. I'm blessed going out. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. There is no weapon that can form against me that will prosper. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I have the mind of Christ. No other mind can come in on me. The enemy is defeated. I bind him and all his demons, and I command them out in the name of Jesus. Satan, you no longer have authority over my household. I will not let you attack me anymore and win. Woo! I am the redeemed of the Lord. The Lord said that I am blessed. My seed is blessed. My children are blessed. My household is blessed. That car is blessed. I give blessings to everybody. I will not curse anybody. I speak what Jesus says. I overflow in righteousness. I live for God. You can take everything, but you can't take my spirit. <laughs> That's what it's about. Arm yourselves. Stop acting like we're little wimps. We are not wimps in Christ Jesus. If he takes everything away from you, say, God, I praise you. Whatever he decides, whenever he decides to step in your household, if he decides, take away the power that he has by saying, God must have allowed you to come in here because I'm a child of God. And if you are in here, there's a word I have for you. Jesus is Lord. Not you, not my trials, not my persecutions, but Jesus is Lord. And last time I checked, you got to answer to him. Woo! That's what we need to be doing. I know my mindset ain't right, but I serve Jesus. I know I want more in my life, but I serve Jesus. I know I don't have all that I want, but I serve Jesus. And I will scream it out every time you come in my household. Take my job. I know he's prepared me for another one. Take my food. God's going to bring somebody to buy me some food. Take my rent. If I have to move out, he's going to move me into someplace else. That's what it's about. You have to give glory to God no matter what goes on in your life. I know it's a sensitive situation. I know my child may be leaving, but it wasn't my child in the first place. God, you gave me that child. And if you want to take him, you can, but the enemy can't. We have got to get the spirit of God and to recognize that even when you don't feel it, he's there. There will be times when you are not feeling it. There will be times when people tempt you to go back to who you used to be. There will be times when people tempt you to say things you used to say. But you know what God said? He said, my grace is sufficient. If you make a mistake and say it, say my grace is sufficient. If you have problems in your life, say his grace is sufficient. Don't allow the enemy. He has no power anymore. You know, he hates this conversation right now. Because he knows that not only are you going to be delivered, but some people on TV going to be delivered. Some people on the internet going to be delivered. You know why? Because his grace is sufficient. You have to know that you didn't choose God. He chose you. That gives you power. If you chose God, you can lose God. But if he chose you, he can't lose what he's offered. He chose you. When you walk, you walk with aggression. If you broke, you broke with aggression. If you crying, you crying with aggression. If you loving, you loving with aggression. Remember who your God is. Don't let anybody tell you different. 
Give God glory in the house if you've been blessed this morning. to be willing to tell the devil that he cannot take away what he didn't give you. He didn't give you salvation. Jesus did. He didn't give you the, 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 your children. Jesus did. So if he didn't give them, he can't take them. But you have to know your authority. You have to know your power. You have to know the love of God. The love of God allows you to go through suffering. So when you suffer, praise God. I tell you about that person because that person that I talked about earlier is serving God to the fullest right now. That person of God is ministering to other people. And, you know, I always tell that person when a person texts me and says, thank you. So don't thank me. Thank him. He gave me the word. I didn't get it myself. If it was just me, you'd probably be dead. But it wasn't me. It was the Lord Jesus who stepped in. Never give praise to a person. Give praise to the real person who did it for you. The glory of God is awesome when you understand it. You understand that sometimes you're going to think off. Sometimes you're not going to have it all. He's not requiring that you have it all. Sometimes you're going to want to talk bad. Sometimes you're going to have dirty thoughts. Don't act like we've been in church all our lives. We trying to get real. Sometimes you ain't going to think right. And God is telling you, I know that. I created you. I know how that enemy works. Part of you is flesh. The other part is spirit. Just reach for the spirit more and I'll grab your hand. Reach for the spirit more, more and I'll have that yoke with you. It's not going to be by yourself. I'm going to be with you. I'm with you when you're cursing. I'm with you when you're talking bad. I'm with you when you're doing things wrong. I'm with you when you're cursing people out. I'm with you when you're screaming at your spouse. But I'm telling you, my grace is sufficient. I'll work you through that deal. You've got to know God is with you. You've got to know what makes you come back. Not me. He makes you come back. What makes you excited about church? Not me. It's God who makes you excited. Who answers your question? Not me. It's God who answers your questions. Never think of me as the person who answers your questions. It's the vessel. I am a vessel. I just speak the word that God gives to me. He will talk to me in the middle of the night and say, this is what I want you to talk about. And I say, God, what do you want me to talk about? You want me to talk about that? That means somebody going through something. Tell me what you want me to say. Show me what you want me to say. I will no longer be the person who speaks to you. I'm just a vessel. Use your God. Reach for your God. Pray to your God. Because a vessel can't be with you at all times, but your God can. So I say that because we're going somewhere. We're going somewhere in Jesus. 